Hey guys, it's Licious Kid from Climax Combo, and we are back with another Leaks of the Week. This week we are continuing off with the Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works uh, booster box that will be coming out on the 23rd of April, so uh, very soon. And yeah, um, since it's coming out very soon, this week they are featuring many, many, many double R's. So, uh, should be an exciting video and probably a moderately long one since the double R's usually take a lot of time to talk about. So, um, yeah, I guess with, uh, with that out of the way, we shall get started. So first off, as we can see, a double R, like I mentioned right off the bat, it's a 0050 to 100 double R Saber. Server and weapon as per usual, what she does is uh, the middle, the other character in your middle border of your center stage gains the following ability. This character cannot be chosen as a target for your opponent's effects and has another effect of search of pay one, uh, clock yourself one damage, place her to rest. If you do, search your deck for up to one Shiro or Saber in its name, show it to your opponent, add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Uh, this, I think the Saber is fairly good. Um, right off the bat, her second effect is very, sim is very similar to that one card in Railgun. Um, I don't know her name. It's that girl who's like... It's that girl who's addicted to the drugs or needs the drugs to use her powers. I don't remember her name, but uh, very similar to that card. However, the other card is a bit better because um, the one in Railgun can't search for Espers, which is the bulk of the set. Uh, this saber can only search out for Shiro's and Sabers, and um, before the Unlimited Blade Works set, like Fate Stay Night, Fate Zero, uh, Fate Hollow, uh, the Saber and Shiro cards aren't that good, they're kinda meh, not the strongest. However, I'm sure uh, this booster is going to change that. Um, I'm sure there will be better Shiro and Sabers cards, I mean we saw a really good Shiro card last week, we saw the one O double R, that one's really good, um, the new Resident Sabers aren't bad at all, and later this week we will see a really good uh, Saber card, so in general, um, with the new additions of better Shiro's and Saber, I'm sure this card will become more playable. Uh, it's really nice because uh, it's a very good way to generate advantage, you're only paying one, you're technically only paying one stock to search for a Saber or Shiro added to your hand. You are clocking yourself one damage, but that's honestly not that big of a deal. At level zero, you would gladly take damage to gain advantage. And that is what this uh, Saber provides you. A consistent way to search out for Shiro's and Sabers in your deck. Uh, early game, very, very powerful. Um, yes, and you can, uh, it's not a once per turn effect, kind of like, uh, like the Inazuma or the Riki. Uh, those are on play. However, well not Inazuma, she's on death, whatever, uh, you know, something like the Riki or the one from the rewrite. This one you can use every turn because her uh, cost is you have to pay one, put her to rest, and then put, uh, and then clock yourself on damage. So you can uh, use it every turn if you have her in the back row, which is not bad at all. Uh, you know, you keep her in the back row for maybe like two to three turns and then uh, move her to the front when you don't want to use her effect anymore. Overall, very solid card and a very good way to keep your deck consistent if you're running enough Shiro slash Sabers to make it uh, very good. But uh, as of right now, we already have a really good Shiro and uh, later this week we'll see a really good Saber and I'm sure uh, more better Shiro and Sabers are to come. Also her first ability is very nice as well, um, giving your center character uh, the ability to not be targeted is also quite nice. You know, be uh, can't get bounced, can't get anti-changed, uh, some anti da uh, you know anti-damage events make your characters immune to those anti-damage events, like the money event from Little Busters. Uh, all around, this effect is becoming more valuable as the meta grows. So definitely, two solid effects tied to Saber. I do think she is double R worthy, and the art is pretty cute as well. So, yeah, excellent card. On to another card, 00500R uh, Shiro, he's Master and Weapon as per usual. His first effect is all your Master characters gain the following ability, Clock Encore. It has another effect, of one play from hand to stage, you may pay cost, which is 2. If you do, search your deck for one Saber's Master Shiro, show it to your opponent, add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Uh, really quick to mention, Saber, Saber's Master Shiro we talked about last week, it is the one double r that combos with the Flare Trigger. Uh, not going to go over it again because we have, but overall, uh, I do think this card is really good. 
So yeah, just keep that in mind. So Shiro, uh, very similar or pretty much uh, an exact copy of the Avenger from the Hollow Extra Booster. The Ho Avenger in the Hollow Extra Booster gives all Masters Clock Encore, which is the big part of the Avenger uh, card. The Avenger does some couple other shenanigans, I believe, but uh, the big part is that he gives all characters, all Masters Clock Encore, and she this Shiro does the same. And I think it's really uh, good that he does, because um, I guess for one in uh, Japan, I don't know, the Hollow Extra Booster is a little old now, so I guess for uh, Japanese players, it might be a little easy to build a Masters deck if you can get your hands on uh, the Clock Encore assist, because uh, having Global Clock Encore is very nice, and it's what makes the Master build uh, viable. Uh, without Adventure, the Master builds... Uh, the, the Masters are just a bunch of weenies that don't really pose much of a threat, but when they all have Clock Encore, then it's a different story. So, now, uh, they have another Avenger, so people who couldn't get their hands on Avenger in the past can now easily get it in the form of a reprinted Avenger, essentially. But uh, I think what's also very nice about this card is that um, I'm going to assume this booster pack is coming to the US. I don't see why Face Day Night Unlimited Blade works trial deck and booster pack won't be coming to the US. I think that'd be really dumb. If they brought Fate Zero to the US, I don't see why Unlimited Blade Works won't be coming to the US. So I'm going to assume that Unlimited Blade Works is going to come to the US. And with that, I, uh, you know, this Shido is going to come out. And now US has access to Avenger that they didn't have in the past. Uh, I don't think the Hollow Extra Booster was ever or will ever come to the US. And so I never thought the U.S. will have access to Avenger and thus, you know, not having a very uh, viable chance at building a master deck. But now that Shiro is out and he does the same thing as Avenger, uh, when he does come to the U.S., which I assume he's going to, uh, now the U.S. has access to a uh, global clock encore assist in Shiro, in the form of Shiro instead of Avenger. And um, I think this card is better than Avenger because he has the master trait. Uh, you can search him out with cards that search out for masters. I think the Einsburn uh, does she? Let me. I I believe she searches for masters. Oh wait, I don't think US even has this extra booster, huh? Yeah, she. Oh, she searches for master and servants. I, oh, I didn't know that. I thought she only searched for masters. Anyways, I guess the trade. Oops. Oops. Spoilers. Anyways, um. I guess it doesn't really matter that uh, he's a master, but still, um, in general, I think the most important part is that U.S. will now have access to uh, master builds, so uh, very good. And his second effect is also uh, very good. On play, you get to pay two to search out for the one O we talked about last week. Uh, like I said, the one O, uh, very solid card. So um, yeah, ability uh, a little stock heavy to search him out, but still. Uh, Still very good. Uh, never hurts to have a good. The never. It doesn't hurt to for him to have this on play ability, and he does once again search out for a solid card. So in general, very solid card. Uh, very good first ability. Pretty much staple if you're running a master heavy deck. So already a staple card in the master builds, and he searches out for another good master, which will probably be a staple in the master build. So Shiro is really good. Oops. So yeah. Let us go on to Tuesday. Uh, Rin 3210K double R once again. Uh, perfect day for a date Rin, Master and Jewel. Uh, what she does is when she this card is played from hand to stage, draw up to two cards, then discard one card from your hand, put it to the waiting room. Uh, when this card is played from hand to stage, choose one Master or Servant character in stand and then put it to rest. And lastly, it combos with the gate here. Um, Tosaka's great, or Tosaka's Magic Crest. Uh, when this card declares an attack, uh, and you have the gate, you may pay cost, which is 2. If you do, deal X damage to your opponent, where X is the number of climaxes in your waiting room. And of course, this damage can be cancelled. And the gate seems to be a climax rare. Uh, so first of all, the art is extremely cute. And let's go on. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, first of all, her first effect is uh, pretty good. It's a uh, draw 2, ditch 1. Uh, not the greatest, but uh, you know, nothing crazy, nothing uncommon. So, uh, an okay first effect. The her second effect is kind of like ah, because you have to put a character from stand to rest. 
Um, if you are not familiar with uh, Fate Stay Night, well, at least in Japan, they have uh, a very good assist. It's called uh, it's like a one one assist. Is a two one assist? I'm not. I don't remember exactly. It's a rain assist, and um, it's it's a rain assist. It gives power. I don't exactly remember how much, but the big part of that card is that uh, you can put her and another character to rest, and if you do, you get to choose an opponent's character or you get to choose the opponent's card in the waiting room and put it on top of their deck. And um, as you can clearly hear, that's pretty much guarantees the damage off the top of their deck, which is really good. And you can start, I think it's a level 1 assist, and you can start doing it as early as level 1. So uh, guaranteeing 1 damage off the top of your opponent deck since at the start of level 1 is really awesome. And so usually the Fate player every turn, they're going to be, you know, tapping back row to put something back on top. It's, you know, it's just that awesome. But um, it kind of sucks because uh, Rin, you have to tap a character, so um, you know it's not the end of the world. You can like play something else, uh, tap, play Rin, tap that character, play over it. Uh, not the end of the world, especially because Rin pluses you on play, so fueling your minusing yourself by forcing you, minusing yourself like that isn't uh, that bad because you know Rin replaces herself in your hand. But still, uh, just kind of sucks that you have to tap something. But still, she does have a really good climax combo, um, very similar to that one girl in Girlfriend Beta. I don't know the Girlfriend Beta's name. That one in Red Level Three, very similar to that card, um, which is good. But um, I don't know. Um, like right now, right now, Fate has the Level Three Rider, which is a really good game ender. And right now they don't have uh, Fate's game ending is pretty weak. Uh, level three Rider is kind of the only real game under they have. While well, they also have the Archer and Rin combo with the plus two Soul, I guess those are the only two real game enders. But now, um, you know, they're getting more. They have the level three Archer that we talked about last week, and now we have the level three Rin, and we are going to talk about more game enders as the videos to come. And with all these game enders, um, I don't know if people are going to run Rin because. Uh, you know, you have to, uh, like I said, you have to tap a character, not the end of the world, but still kind of annoying. Her on playability is okay. And her climax combo, uh, you know, is can be a little iffy, can be a little difficult to manage at times. If you don't have any climaxes in your waiting room, then, uh, you know, you're going to have to get some somehow. If you don't have enough climaxes in your waiting room, then, uh, you know, you're going to have to get some. If you have too many climaxes in your waiting room, that then it uh, kind of bites. And also you are forcing yourself to 1k, 1 soul, and giving all your characters plus 1 soul. If your opponent has a high amount of damage, uh, you know, it can be a little difficult to manage. Um, just a lot of situations where this card might not be favorable. But uh, still, nonetheless, the climax combo is good. A little heavy, yes, because you you have to pay two for Dean, and then you have to pay two when you do the climax combo. Of course, you can say that you can attack with the other two first before attacking with Dean to make the cl cl uh, climax combo a little lighter. But still, in general, it's still a little heavy, just a little heavy, and um, the climax combo can be a little iffy, cannot work at t your advantage sometimes. But uh, still, I do think it's a very solid card because it does combo with the gate. Uh, right now, Fate does not have a good uh, gate combo, so um, you know you might as well run this gate because uh, it actually has a pretty good combo. If you're running, you know, this gate, you might you could run like one, two, 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 three of these rings if you manage to find the space, and then um, you know try to go from there. Uh, definitely, I think uh, staple in the ring only deck since the ring slash archer only deck is now possibly a thing with the Rin slash Archer uh, Clock Encore assist, but still um, in the normal like s Servant slash Master variant builds, I don't know. Uh, I do think it's a good card, but uh, we'll, I'll, we'll, you'll see as we go later into the video, there's other really good game enders, so uh, right now just uh, keep this at the back of your mind, but still a uh, really cute card. Anyways, let's go on to Wednesday. Right, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yes, Wednesday, 3, 2, 10k, double R, Rider. I'm kind of surprised she got a level 3. I mean, she didn't really do much in Unlimited Blade Works, and I don't know, I think it's kind of surprising, but, um, oh well. He, she's Servant and Weapon, 
what she does is when she's playing from Hattie stage, you may choose one of your opponent's level 2 or lower characters, send it to his owner's waiting room. If you do, your opponent chooses up to one level 0 or lower character from his waiting room and place it onto the original border of that card. And it combos with After School Dance, which is the uh, free stock 1 soul here for green. Climax rare. Uh, if you do, our owner versus opponents with that stock 1 soul, you may place that character to his owner's clock. Um, I don't think this card is very good. Our first effect is uh similar to the level three Nui from Kill a Kill, and honestly, level three Nui is really bad. So um, this first effect is just like I don't know who really cares about this. Because it's nice because you get to target your opponent's back row because you get to choose a level two or lower character. Uh, most decks don't have a level three assist. The only decks with a real uh, level three assist is like uh, Monogatari series and Lock Horizon. Against other decks, most of their level, their, most of their assist usually like 1k globals, 1k in front, or uh, level assist uh, are usually level twos or lowers. So the fact that she can hit 90% uh, of the back row in the game is nice. But replacing it with the level zero is quite nice but like still um some decks just aren't really dependent on their back row like uh my uh if i was playing isekoi and then someone slapped down this rider on me and they targeted my back row i wouldn't be too threatened i don't really play the level assist half the time but like still i wouldn't really care and yeah like some decks that aren't dependent on the back row just wouldn't really care also um yes you can also opponent your to uh you can target your opponent's front row if they have a high power level two in the front row, and like a bunch of other and like two other level threes, and you want to guarantee the reverse. Of course, you can just send that level two to the waiting room and then put a level zero there and then kill it. But like even like even then, it's like dumb. Your opponent can play around this first effect either by having many level threes, only level threes in the front, which is very doable, if their opponent is level three, of course. Or they could just not have anything in the front row, and at that point you're talking in your back row. But like I said, the debate is like, you know, some decks aren't dependent on the back row, and um, even then you still don't get her reverse ability, which is the big part about her. So honestly, her first effect I think is not that good. And her climax combo is like, not very good in my opinion either. Uh, it combos with the stock one soul, which is not bad, but I do think clock shooters... Uh, are better when they combo with the gold bar because gold bar is really nice because as you guys know how gold bar works uh, you keep you just constantly attack and then one day you're going to trigger a gold bar and at level 3 if you're properly compressed compressed and you have a cl high climax ratio in your deck then it'd be fairly easy to trigger a gold bar and once you trigger that gold bar next turn your opponent should be scared because uh, you know you're going to start clock shooting uh, you know gold bar dependent clock shooters like uh, Komachi Right, that's his name from Terraformars, um, the level 3 Eddie, what we saw a lot, uh, last time in, with Milky Holmes. And, um, can't think of any other, but, uh, you know, most clock shooting, uh, climax combo dependent cards usually combo the gold bar for a good reason. But the fact that she combos with a stock 1 soul is kind of like meh, uh, makes it more difficult for her to accomplish her climax combo at level 3 because you're going to have to... Uh, get a hold of this climax combo or the climax and you know the only real way you can get a uh, hold climaxes in your hand is by drawing into them and then once you draw into them you have to make the decision of is it worth this keeping this card after refresh uh to climax combo or and having the potential of taking more damage because i have this climax in my deck etc etc still uh you know more difficult for you to get the stock one sold to your hand and all and all you get in the end is a, uh, a clock shoot. The stock one soul also does not give extra power like the gold bars do. So she'll only be 11k base before assist when you try to... Uh, my bad, she'll only be 10k base before assist when you try to climax combos. So makes it more difficult to reverse. And honestly, Fate already has a really good clock shooter. They have this asshole. He's, you know, the writer from Fate Zero. I'm sure many of you guys, if not all you guys know him. But, you know, he clock shoots. It's a lot cheaper. He's not climax. It's not cheaper. Well, actually, it, okay, it's more expensive because you have to pay one. One here versus something. But he's not climax combo dependent. Um, he's pretty much, he can hit pretty high power if your uh, opponent has many rested characters. 
I mean, with just one card your opponent has in rest, which is very likely going to happen, he hits the same power as the new rider, and also, you know, that's with just one rested character. Most likely your opponent's going to have more rested characters, and then after that, he just becomes that much more powerful than the rider, which is important because the riders need all the power they can get to successfully clock shoot. And, you know, he's, his clock shoot is great. It's not climax combo dependent. He's always going to pose a threat. And, okay, his third effect is really wonky. I only seen one guy use it once, and it honestly didn't do anything for him. But still, he still has the third effect, which is really wonky and might save you sometimes. So, um, you know, there's honestly, I don't really see a point in this rider, this new level 3 rider, when the old level 3 rider is just awesome. And he's still awesome. And, uh, you know, he's... You know, for the U.S. players, if this booster does ever come out, the Unlimited Blade Works does ever come out to the U.S., it doesn't really matter because uh, U.S. has access to the level 3 Rider from Fate Zero. So, honestly, uh, pretty, I guess, okay, pretty crappy double R, and it's overshadowed by the Rider level 3 from Fate Zero. So, honestly, I don't really see a point to playing this. They even both have the Servant traits, so, um, you know, you're going to be running them in the Servant builds. Um, I mean, Rider, the new level 3 Rider has the weapon trait, which is kind of important. There's some cards that, you know, work with the weapons, but still, like, I think the, I think the level 3 Rider from Fate Zero far, is far superior than the new level 3 Rider from, uh, Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. So, I'm sorry, I don't think this Rider is very good. And I don't really see a reason to be playing this card. Unless you really like Rider, of course. Anyways, let's go on. Uh, to Sakura, she's 002k, are uh, only sports because, you know, she's not a master or servant. What she does is when she's played from hand to stage, you may bait cost, which is discard one card. If you do, check, look up the top four cards of your deck, choose one green character amongst them, show the opponent, add it to your hand, then discard any remaining amount to your waiting room. Uh, we're seeing cards like these pop up nowadays. I believe Milky Holmes just got one. Um... Contact Collection is having uh, a good time with the Akatsuki from the new booster. And I see a couple Idol Master builds from the Azusa variant. Uh, this one not as good because you have to search for a green card, or a green character I should say. And um, you know, uh, there are good ca green characters in the set. However, uh, just kind of sucks that she's limited to only green characters. So of course, as you can clearly see, if you have many green characters to make this card work, then by all means you can run this Sakura, but if you don't feel like you have enough green characters to make this card consistent, then don't bother because if you don't if you don't hit a green character with Sakura, all you did was minus yourself, and uh, that's never fun. So, yeah, a uh, good card if you have many green cards, but if you don't have a lot of green characters, don't bother. Also, um, kind of sucks. Like uh, she doesn't have to serve in our master trait, so there's no real way of searching slash uh, grabbing her from. There's no real way of searching her. Like, you can't combo with the Shiro to find her, etc, etc. Uh, but still, a solid card. I still think it's good to run if you have many green cards in your deck. So yeah, let us go on. And yeah, that's it for this one. Once again, the Climax Rare. On to Thursday. Uh, more double R's, of course. That's the theme of today. Double R every video, or every day. And this one is Aline's, once again, to no surprise, because uh, this season of at Fate Stay Night is all about Rin, 3295 double R, Master and Jewel. She has experience of when you have for the sake of victory Rin, which is herself, and dual blade wielding archer archer in your level area. This card loses one level in your hand. It has another ability, a one play from hand to stage, you may pay cost. If you do, choose one master or servant character from your waiting room and return it to your hand. I um I don't think this card has a cost. Yeah, the Japanese text, like there's no cost for this card, so I don't think this card, this part really belongs. Pretty much when it's played from hand to stage, uh, choose a master or servant character in your waiting room and return it to your hand. If you don't, uh, I guess first we have to know what dual blade wielding archer archer is, but I'm sure many of you guys know what that card is because he was featured in the trial deck. He's a 106k, uh, he, now he's a common in the boosters. I, Yeah, he's a common now. Servant and weapon. I should see see dual blade wielding archer archer. Uh, this card cannot side attack. Servant at weapon. Um, I guess first we should talk. Hmm. 
Uh, let's just talk about Ying first. So for her to lose one level in your hand, you need to see have herself and this archer in your level up area. Um, the archer himself is not a bad card. He's a 1066k, so he's an oversized, costless level 1. So he must have a demerit of some form, and his is he cannot side attack, which hurts in some cases because... Um, you know, some decks have 1065, and then uh, at that point, you are, he is weaker than uh, he is weaker by 500 power, so he might be forced to side attack unless he gets extra power from assists or climaxes, what have you. But uh, still, uh, you know, it kind of hurts that he can't side attack against certain matchups if your opponent is running a high power deck. Then uh, this might pose a problem at level one because you can't just play a climax and side, side, side. You're gonna have to always front or. Uh, direct attack so it might be a little problematic depending on uh what you're playing against but still not uh not not a bad card because he's still a 106k and uh he doesn't have any wonky um wonky uh conditions to fulfill it like uh the Gilgamesh from Fate Zero the one that gets 1k if your opponent has like four or like more characters something like that that one's a little wonky but this archer always a 106k so, uh, this archer, not bad, not the greatest card, but definitely not uh, the worst card ever. So, the fact that Rin also works with a pretty decent card uh, makes her playability go up, because if she worked, if this archer, like, really sucked, then uh, there's no, then it would hurt this Rin's playability by a lot. But the fact that the archer is uh, a decent card makes this card more playable. So, um, since these two since the archer is playable, and uh, now her playability jumps up, makes the uh, makes her a condition, and her condition is fairly easy to do. All you have to do is level up Arin and this archer. If you're running four of each, then uh, that shouldn't be too hard to accomplish at all. And um, if you do play her early, if you play her at level two, I do think you get a lot of advantages because you get a uh, level three out at level two, meaning you get to hit for two soul. She has high power, and yeah, she has uh, hits for two soul and high power, and when she comes into play, you get to salvage. It's, I think that my neighbors are making a lot of noise. Let me close my doors. Sorry, guys. Or close my window, I should say. Anyways, that's better. Um, Yeah, when you play her early, you get to salvage a master or servant character, which is the bulk of the set. So, um, comes out early, hits for 2 soul, has 9-5 power, and, um, so, and pluses you on play. Of course, you can grab another ring, because, uh, there's no, you, it doesn't say you can, so grab a ring, play a ring, grab a ring, play a ring, grab a ring, play a ring. As you can see, you can just grab all these level 3s, and then boom, 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 kind of like level 3 Onodera from Nisekoi. Of course, not as powerful, because Onodera is 10-5 base, but still, this thing is good because of of course of all the other synergy we in the set because of course you can have run it in conjunction with something like Shiro and you have an early summon level three that comes out at level two and plus is on play and hits for two soul and has big power and uh will have clock encore which is quite a nuisance for your opponent to deal with so uh works well with the rest of the set of course still susceptible to anti change but some anti changes uh, don't send to the uh, some anti some anti changes play around encore because sometimes they send it to the bottom deck, which is really annoying. But uh, you know some anti changes send them to the waiting room, and if they do, then Shiro's got your back because you can just clock encore the ring, and uh, yeah, and then it for some sets I'm sure she will be very difficult to deal with, especially when backed up by clock encore. So uh, good card. I guess the biggest downside to this, however, is that it's going to be difficult, uh, like, running dual or tricolor. Uh, dual color is still possible, just a bit annoying to do, because uh, you have to level up the ring and you have to level up the archer. So your level up air zone at level 2 is going to be red and red. Uh, and then at level 3, you get to put another color of your choice, let's say yellow. Um, but then, like, still, you, dual color is still possible because, you know, uh, at level 2, if you have, like, if you're at 2-0, then, and you have both of these in your level up zone, all you have to do is clock a, level, uh, a yellow, 
and then from there, or blue or green, what have you, just clock your other color, and then uh, you have dual you have dual color up and active for the rest of the game because of course you're gonna clock you're gonna level up that uh, other card that you just clocked. So dual color is still possible with uh, if you're running this wombo combo here, but tri color um, might be you know it's I'm not gonna say impossible, but it's gonna be very difficult to do because you're you're only ha you're gonna have two of the same color in your level up area. So when you hit level three, it's gonna be really awkward if you're trying to play a tri color deck. I'm not going to say impossible because there are quad color decks out there, but uh, still awkward to do because, you know, your level up area has two of the same color. Quad color decks, I'm pretty sure is going to be impossible unless you're that much of a god. But still, um, because you have to have two reds in your level up area, running tri-color I think is going to be too hard to accomplish. So I do think if you're running this Wombo combo, uh, save it for a mono red deck like a uh, you know, they seem to be emphasizing a uh, Rain slash Archer uh, only variant or only decks in the Alone of Blade Works. So if you're running an Archer slash Rain only deck, shouldn't be a problem at all because the entire deck is mono red. But you know, if you're running dual, if you're running a tricolor deck, uh, I would say you shouldn't really run this card or this combo because uh, it's just too hard to, uh, it's, too, too, it's gonna mess up the rest of your deck. And you know, if you're running a tricolor deck and you don't run the experience, then she's not really good because then all she becomes is an on-play salvage, which is not that strong. So uh, yeah, uh, not for all decks because the color combination can mess up your build, but uh, you know, if you have the right deck, then definitely a solid card. Because uh, as of right now, I can't think of a good, like, Fates level 2 game is kind of lackluster. Like all, against all the Fate players I've played, like when they hit level 2, it's just like, Nothing. It's just a continuation of their level one. They just try to build a bunch of stock. But um, now, if you have the right deck, you can have a good level two game that Rin offers because plus on play and big power and clock encore. So, yeah, excellent card if your deck can manage it. But as you can, like I said, I don't think it's for all decks because it's going to mess up your color count. Lastly, in event one one uncommon, Father's Keepsake. Uh, choose up to two, two jewel characters, return them to your hand, then discard a card, and put it to the waiting room. As you can see by now, the jewel characters are Tosaka. She's always jewel and master. Well, I guess her father is also jewel from Fate Zero. So, but honestly, the, the her dad's the cards that have her dad are really bad. So pretty much, you can think of this event for only Tosaka cards. Or I should say only for Rin cards, or because her dad's Tosaka. So you can only think this of, of this card that salvages Rin. Uh, you know, this events like this is uh, common. The 2-1 event from Madoka, 1-1 uh, event from Nisekoi. Uh, they do, uh, the cards like this are very nice, very good hand filter. But of course, this one kind of bites because you can only grab jewel characters. But still, uh, if you have enough jewel characters, then this card is uh, pretty much staple in the Rin heavy decks. And we have seen a lot of good Rins by now. We've seen the level 3 the other level 3, and we've seen the good Eans last week, they have a level 0 Suicider, they have a global Encore, they have a really good spammable Brainstorm, a lot of nice Eans cards that's already been announced, and I'm sure there is more to come. So, this event should be very good, and yeah. Let us go on to Friday, the last day. Of course, it has to be Saber. 3295 double R, uh, Servant and Weapon. What she does is for every other magic or servant character you control, this card gains plus 500 power. It has another ability of uh, this ability can only be activated once per turn. During the turn, this card is played from hand to stage. When the damage of this card is cancelled, place the top card of your deck into the waiting room and deal X damage to your opponent, where X is the level of the character plus 1. Of course, a blick. Of course, climaxes are treated as level 0, and of course, uh, her burn ability can be cancelled, as per usual. Finally, a good level 3 saber, like, all the other level 3 sabers sucked, and you know what else really sucked? This saber, I don't know what they were thinking when they released the one in Fate Zero, but I was super mad when I saw this one a couple years back when I first started playing, so, finally, a good saber card. That's level 3. Um, you know, she's 3295, 
However, she gets 500 per master or servant you control, and it's during both turns, which is kind of surprising since it's a yellow card. Most yellow cards are only like during your turn, but this card is during both players' turn, which is really nice. So, uh, 3 2. 11-5, assuming you have a full field of Master or Servants, which shouldn't be too hard to accomplish by level 3. So, 3-2, 11-5, and also, uh, her second ability, uh, very common by now, Musashi from Kantai Collection has proven to be a very powerful card. And other sets have cards like this, like Kill a Kill with Mako. Um, Girl from Beta has this card, and uh, Little Busters has this card now as well. And uh, this Musashi ability has proven to be quite scary and uh you know since it's scary for those cards for the saber it should be no exception uh saber hits high power and has a very scary game ending ability uh, if your opponent is at high clock like if he's at three five uh puts him at a very scary position when you slap down a saber and especially when you slap down multiple of these sabers and then uh you know your opponent should be shaking in their pants because uh it's just like they're kind of they have to cancel six times, which is uh very difficult to do if they're at a high clock. So uh yeah, um not much else to explain. I already explained her second effect many times in the past and I'm sure uh you guys don't want me to hear her second effect, and I'm sure you guys do know that her second effect is very good. So high power and a very strong second ability. Can't go wrong with this card, she's servant. So, of course, she works with all the Servant Synergy. She has Saber in her name, so you can even grab it with the level 0 we saw last week. So, in general, just a solid card. And lastly, Shiro 3210KR. Uh, it's nice, he's a level 3, that's just an R. But, you know, I guess all the double R's are only reserved for Saber. Actually, no, he has another double R. What am I talking about? Anyways, 3210KR, Master and Weapon. Um, when he plays from hand to stage, he heals. And he has another effect of when he's played from hand to stage, you may pay cost, which is discard a weapon card. If you do, you get, he gains plus 2-5 and plus 1 soul for the turn. Um, Not a bad uh, card, because he heals, which is nice. He has the master trait, so he works with all the master synergy. So uh, his trait and his healing ability is already pretty solid. And his th second effect is not the worst ever. Um, not bad, because... Uh, Kinda sucks, you have to discard a weapon character, and the weapon characters we are pretty much Shiro. And I think like 90% of the servants are a weapon, like uh, Ryder is a weapon, the Archer Archer is a weapon, so most of the servants are servant weapon, and Shiro is master weapon. So you can think of him as he works with most weapon, or he can he works with most servants and all Shiro cards. So, um, yeah. The, uh, his second ability kind of sucks because like I said you have to discard a weapon character and it's not just discard any character and you might not always have a, a weapon character if you're running like a master slash servant mix you might have a couple Tosakas here and there um, oh yeah Saber is also a weapon so actually yeah it shouldn't be too hard but still uh, not bad because uh, he gains plus 2-5 which is like whatever I think the big part is that he gains a plus 1 soul the plus 1 soul can be nice if you want to push for a little extra damage or you're trying to get precise damage the plus 1 soul that he can uh, guarantee himself is quite nice so Shiro he's only an R he heals and he has a uh, I would say a uh, nifty and can be potentially useful at uh, many situations Second ability is quite nice. So overall, Shiro is a solid, a very solid R and a decent healer at that. So good job, Shiro. He's getting a lot of good cards. And that is all for this week. Only 38 minutes. That's not bad. Usually, uh, videos that have an abundant amount of level of double Rs usually take a really long time. So that's cool. Anyways, uh, actually, wait. Now, Dean. As we have seen, now Saber has a really good, like, you know, game ending level 3. Um, you know, you still have the Rider level 3. Oops, where's Rider? You still have the Rider level 3 from uh, Fate Zero. And, like, if you're running Saber, if you're running uh, Rider, then, you know, if you're running, like, 3 Riders, 3 Sabers, or, like, 3 Sabers or three riders, two sabers, what have you, you're going to need a couple healers, you know? Oh, let me turn that to silent. My friend reminding me about homework. I don't care about homework. 
anyways, um, you know, uh, the set now has good game ending level 3s that aren't climax combo dependent. So, will there be space for the team? Like, if you're running a lot of sabers, if you're running a lot of riders, then your level 3 space, like, that's already a good amount of level 3s. You're going to need a couple healers, because uh, right now, Fate does not have anti-heal, so you might as well be running a couple healers, because, you know, you always got to have a couple healers, no matter what. So, uh, at that point, there's that's so many level 3s. Do you really have space for the team? Her climax combo is good. Don't get me wrong, but you know, at times it can be a little iffy. At t like at times it can be a little iffy, and um, and yeah, it's kind of heavy. And once again, it's climax combo dependent. And once again, do you really have space for the card? Uh, actually, probably. Um, yeah, I mean, you're probably gonna be running if you're running like a master servant mix. You're probably gonna run like Shido and his climax combo, and then probably run uh the gate because uh. Why not run this gate? There's no other better gates. I guess you could run a couple Tozakas and then have a good day. Actually, I take that all back. Uh, there is a, probably enough space to run Tozaka. You can run like three of her, three sabers, maybe a couple healers, or three her, three of her, three of two of her, two of him. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys are gonna run like a, if you guys are like, what what would you guys run for the level three? Because they have other good game enders now. Do you think there's space for Tozaka? Would you give up Saber or Rider for her? Uh, let me know. But I do think uh, the advantage of not being Climax combo dependent and uh, having a very light cost to a game end is very nice. But still, this Tosaka is extremely cute art. So I would probably run it anyways, despite me saying all that. And Climax combo is, you know, not bad. But yeah, uh, I guess that's it for this video. Um, Very, very solid week. Uh, First week or the first day, Saber, very solid card. Shido also very solid. This thing solid. Rider is the it's probably the crappiest card this week. Uh Sakura, good if you're running a lot of green cards. This card these this Wombo combo is good, just your color count might be messed up, but still not bad with the right deck. Very good for lean heavy decks. And lastly, uh two very solid level threes. So this week is just an awesome week for fate stay or for fate players and yeah which I'm very happy to see I really liked I really like the series I think it's an awesome series uh, I'm a big type moon fag but uh, still love the series and um, you know I would I'm happy that fate is getting uh, some really good cards and hopefully when the set comes out next week we will see uh, more fate topping or popping out and uh, yeah should be cool so I guess with that out of the way, there's not much else to say. So until next time, guys.